Okay, so we are back to do a quick video here. Breaking news, not breaking news. LeBron James 2024, he put his bid in and he told, uh, reported by Shams saying, hey, this year I'm bringing the A team, not the B team, not the C team, not the D team. And I want to talk about who that A team will be with Cam. Cam, my co-host, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm happy to see LeBron is putting together the Avengers to head back to the USA this year and make sure we win the gold. Absolutely. So first of all, we got to talk about why he has to put together the Avengers. And that's because for the second World Cup in a row, we did not get gold. In fact, we didn't even contend for a medal this year. I think we got bronze in the last World Cup. So we lost to Germany, put us into the into like the uh, the loser bracket, I guess. And then we lost to Canada with Shea and Dylan Brooks put 40 on Team USA's head. Cam, any comments on that? I mean, I'm the biggest Dylan Brooks hater, but I'm about to say, you might, you, might issue, you might need to issue a public apology to Dylan Brooks before we get started here, because there's several, I think at least three videos on our channel of <laughs> strictly Dylan Brooks slander from you. Absolutely. Dylan Brooks, they gave you what, like four for 80, four for 90 with incentives. And I was bashing that contract. I apologize. You, Shay, Lou Dort, Kelly Olenek, RJ Barrett, Canada beat Team USA fair and square. I got nothing else to say about that. But now let's talk about who we think is going to be on the 2024 Olympic team. To preface this, there will be a documentary about this. LeBron James, year 22. You can tell it's maybe the last couple years of his career. And he says, I want to be the guy to kind of, uh, to start this back up, to be the catalyst of USA basketball, getting back to what it used to be. And with that being said, Cam, I'm going to throw it to you. Give me your starting five for the 2024 Team Olympics. Yeah, I'll give you my starting five, and I bet we'll have a pretty similar list, but I want to preface this before we start here. I do think that we do we did kind of be have a little bit of bias towards some of the older players, so I could see some of these guys dealing with injuries and not being able to perform. But that being said, this is my dream list, so we're going to go with everybody fully healthy. I mean, Just Bronze, starting Steph, five right KD, now. Huh? Just starting five right now. My starting five right now, yeah. I mean, Braun, Steph, and KD are all locked for the starting five. I don't think there's much of a discussion there. For me, though, I'm going to go with Paul George also. I mean, shooting, defense, we know what he can bring. He, I think he fits in there nicely next to Steph and KD. Uh, for my five, I know you I know you personally are not going to like this, but I am praying with all my might that Joel Embiid is eligible to play for Team USA this year. I think it's going to happen. I think he's going to be our five in the Olympics. Hey, I'm all for getting the Avengers and getting the, you know, the redeem team for 2024 to show the world who's really still on top. But if we have to convince Joel Embiid in, to switch his dual citizenship so that we can beat a Franz Wagner and Dennis Schroeder led Germany team, something's wrong with basketball in America. If that's the case, that's your starting five. I agree with everyone there, Steph or I got Braun at the one, Steph as my two. I've had PG as my three, because like you said, PG is one of the best plug and play players in the NBA. He can fit in any system. He can shoot in any system, got a deep bag, plays good defense. I got KD at my four and I have Anthony Davis at my five. I think Anthony Davis is what we're seeing with Jaron Jackson, except he's also grabbing 10 boards. The one thing about Jaron is he may be giving you that defense. He's not giving you that same rebounding output as some other bigs. All right, so that's our starting five. Cam, let me hear the second group, the bench players coming for the 2024 Olympic team. Yeah, so my second unit, uh, I'm going to have, before I start, I'm going to have my two guys I want to be on the second unit, but I do not think they will make this team. Zion and Paulo Bancaro, both those guys I would like to see play for the USA again in 2024. I don't think it'll happen. Me, I think Paulo has a better chance than Zion, though, just because he was on this team this year, played really well. And I don't, but I don't think Zion, and we, we all know like the health issues. So I'm going to go with Booker, Ant. Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, and Anthony Davis. That's going to be my that's going to be my bench five. I really liked what Anthony Edwards was doing in the playoffs this year. I mean, I think he or not in the playoffs in the tournament this year. I think he proved that he's a leader and he's worthy to play again for Team USA this year. Yeah. Uh, so I my first thought when I heard that is Devin Booker, Jimmy Butler, Anthony Edwards. Who's going to be the point guard? Who's going to be controlling the ball? And my answer that I answered myself was Devin Booker early in his career was given point guard duties growing 
up or becoming that guy people for forget songs. that people forget exactly. that campaign wasn't always there it wasn't chris paul who was always there devin booker had to bear the brunt of the playmaking responsibilities for that Suns team early on so i like that three and then give me the the forward and the center again uh tatum and anthony davis because uh you had him in your starting lineup but i still he's definitely he's definitely making this list of lebron's putting the team together exactly and we talked about this tatum and duran are essentially the same player at this point but seniority is going to win out and kevin durant is not coming off the bench in the 2024 olympics my bench five is a little different i have damian lillard at the one devin booker at the two Jimmy Butler at the three, Jason Tatum at the four, and then NBA Finals. He's been there twice already. Bam out of bios, my five. Someone that can switch one through five, can still get boards and I guess hang down low with the bigs in Europe like Jonas Valanciunas and Daniel Tice and can kind of bang down low with them. All right, so we have our starting five. We have our bench five. There are 12 spots on Team USA. Cam, let me hear those last two players you have. Uh, this one, I really hope he gets voted off for Paulo Bancaro, but I think Draymond Green's going to get this spot just because of the seniority that we just uh, talked about. And like I said, I mean, he's good friends with everybody in the starting lineup. And at the end of the day, there is a little bias in here as well. So th- that's good. He's going to be there. And then my last spot is going to go to Tyrese Halliburton. I think he's one of the best point guards in the NBA. He had a great run this year. I think he's proved that he's good enough to go again next year, especially after another leap he's going to take this year in Indiana. That's really interesting. So I'm looking back at my list and I don't have one player coming back from the World Cup. You have Anthony Edwards, you have Tyrese Halliburton. Is there any more? No, just those two. Those two. So those are your standouts for the World Cup this year. Well, and, and Ben Caro. I said I and, wanted to. Exactly. Come back on and team, Paolo Ben Caro. He may not make it, though. Yeah. So you have three guys returning. And I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that. I think reward some of the players who were there during the World Cup so they can get that chance in the Olympics, too. However, If LeBron's saying, hey, I'm getting the Avengers, we're not half-assing it. We're going all in, you know? Because of that, that Draymond pick that you had is good. I think Draymond gets zero log zero minutes in these games, but I think he's there for moral support. I think his experience and and what he's done in his NBA career and international career can really help Team USA. My two guys that I have are Kawhi Leonard and Russell Westbrook. And I get it, Russell Westbrook, You know, he's not the same guy we saw in 2012 or 2014 or 2016 MVP prime Russ, but you can't have a 2024 redeemed team. You can't be bringing back all these legends and not bring back one of the top three point guards of that era in Russell Westbrook. What's your response to that? You think Westbrook's really going to get that call from LeBron if LeBron's putting the team together after their breakup last year in L.A.? You think that you really think that Russ gets the call again? I'm so glad you asked me that question because that is a perfect segue into what I want to talk about next. In the original Dream Team, who was the one guy who wasn't called? Do you know that, Cam? Isaiah uh, Thomas. I, oh, yes, Remember, yes. No, I knew that. I thought you were talking about the LeBron team this no, no, year. No, no, no. We're good. Yeah. Indeed, we all know why Isaiah Thomas wasn't on that team because – Because Jordan did not want him on that team. Because Jordan didn't want him on that team. So if – LeBron James was asked that question. I don't know what he would say. The end of the Russ LeBron Lakers era was a little rocky. I think a little rocky is, is a nice way to put it. <laughs> it was a lot more than a little rocky. He's getting I, booed every single home game. Every home game. When he's taking shots, the crowd is saying no before the shot even. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But I don't think LeBron's going to do that to Russ. I mean, that's what I said. This is will be a documentary in 10, 15 years. And I don't want to see Russ get onto a on the camera and say, I don't know why I wasn't called. I mean, that would be a tough scene to to swallow right there. Yeah, that would be brutal. I mean, I could definitely see it. They were pretty good friends before uh, before this year happened. I mean, maybe there's always different things that happen off the court. I can see them still having a pretty good relationship. It's, it's not like they unfollowed each other on social media or anything petty like that. So it's not crazy unrealistic to say Russ gets the call, but I just I think there's too many young guys that can contribute more value than he can at this point in his career. It's a great point. The last thing I'll say before we hop on out of here is Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, 
I like that part about it, or I guess Jimmy Butler too. The cool part about these documentaries when they're being made is that they like to go in depth on how they recruited each player. When the documentary was talking about Magic and Bird, Magic and Bird were a package. They have to go together, right? You have to go out and get Charles Barkley, and then you have to tell Carl Malone, well, we just got Charles Barkley, and he said he's better than you, so now Carl has to join the team. Who are you most excited to see, I guess, in a documentary in 10 years? Who would be the hardest person to get to play for Team USA, to convince to play on this 2024 Olympic team? And everybody we just listed, I mean, I think the hardest one to get there has got to be Kawhi Leonard. I mean, health is obviously a big concern. He's not super friendly with everybody to begin with. So I think he's probably the hardest guy to get to play. It'll If Paul George comes, then I, I think there's a better chance, but he's probably the toughest. So LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Kawhi Leonard, Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum, Damian Lillard, Jimmy Butler. That's a team that is not losing. Insane. I mean, I can't wait to see what happens in 2024. It's kind of the struggle. It's a cycle. We always see this. We have a really good team. We absolutely eat an international competition. Then we send the B team, C team back out there. They don't win. And we got to bring back the the A team. And that's what cycle, what moment in the cycle we are in. I can't wait for that to happen, man. Cam, any last things you want to say? I know you're really high on him. Somebody that could have a really good year and break out and possibly be on this team one day is Cade Cunningham. That's a big possibility. I mean, he's going to come back fully healthy and have a full year with Detroit this year. If he has a monster season, I could see him getting the call just because of his versatility that he can bring. He can guard multiple positions. It's pretty valuable on the U.S. stage. That's a great point. Cade Cunningham played on the select team when they were warming up with the Team USA, and they actually beat Team USA in, I think, two of those scrimmages on the first day they played. If Jokic goes and says, I'll join Serbia's team, Serbia finished, I think, second, right? They have Jovic, they have Bogdanovic, they have some other, guy, some other guys. If Greece says we're going to bring Giannis and the Ante Tacumpo brothers, if Canada says we're going to get Jamal Murray and Andrew Wiggins and add them to this squad, the 2024 Olympics are shaping up to be one of the best international basketball tournaments we've ever seen. Last thing I'll say, the Dream Team documentary, there's about a 10 minute segment about how Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen took it upon themselves to lock down Tony Kukoc, who was at that point one of the best international players in the world. Tony Kukoc is not Jokic. Tony Kukoc is not Giannis Antetokounmpo. Tony Kukoc isn't even Carl Anthony Towns. It's going to be a great competition for 2024 Olympics, and we can't wait. With anything, uh, I guess with that being said, we'll see you guys for the next video. See you later. Peace.